Welcome to our training video on Southwest Minnesota Arts Council's Arts in the Schools grants for fiscal year 2025, which runs from July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. I'm Carolyn Tosca, the Grants Administrator for Southwest Minnesota Arts Council. During this training, you'll learn about Southwest Minnesota Arts Council, the guidelines for this grant program, the resources that are available for you on our website, how to use our online grant system, the application questions you'll need to answer, and the grant process, or what happens after you submit your application. Check out the chapters below if you want to go directly to a particular topic. For now, we'll start out talking briefly about Southwest Minnesota Arts Council. Southwest Minnesota Arts Council, or SMOC, is a nonprofit organization committed to promoting and encouraging the development of the arts in the 18 counties of Southwest Minnesota by serving as a source of funds and technical services which enable local organizations, educational institutions, and individuals to sponsor, create, and promote the arts in their communities. Here is our region down in the southwest corner of the state. We are one of 11 regional arts councils that cover the whole state of Minnesota, working to get state arts funding out into all corners. So most of our funding does come from the state of Minnesota with an allocation from the state general fund, but the majority from the Arts and Cultural Heritage or Legacy Fund. We also receive funding from the McKnight Foundation, which we use for our artist grants, and from memberships and donations from around our region. To be a little more specific about our region, applicant organizations need to be located within that region, which includes 18 counties, Big Stone, Chippewa, Cottonwood, Jackson, Candy, Ohio, Lacoparle, Lincoln, Lyon, McLeod, Meeker, Murray, Nobles, Pipestone, Redwood, Renville, Rock, Swift, and Yellow Medicine, and also two tribal nations, Pejutazizi, Upper Sioux Community, and Chanchayapi, Lower Sioux Community. We acknowledge that the Smock region occupies the traditional, ancestral, and contemporary lands of the Dakota people. Arts in the Schools grants are open to public schools and community education for projects that take place within the schools. If either of these organization types has community projects, they should apply for those under our Art Project or Quick Support for Organizations grants. An example of that would be a summer children's theater that's open to the whole community rather than just taking place within the school. The types of projects you can apply for in this program include artist residencies, which would be bringing in a professional artist to work with a core group of students in your school for a certain period of time, most often a week, arts field trips, and juried student art exhibits. You may have other types of projects that may be eligible. If so, talk with us and see if that's something that will work. There are a few requirements for this grant program. The projects can take place during the school year or during the summer, but they do have to be connected to the school. For instance, a particular grade could go on a field trip during the summer. Your project will need to be open to all students within a grade, a subject discipline, or activity. You can't just select individual students to participate in the opportunity. The project also needs to have some sort of component of sharing with the community. So if you've had an artist in residence in your school, maybe an exhibit of what the students have done. If you've gone on a field trip, maybe they can do some sort of presentation when they're back, just some sort of sharing with the community. The Arts in the Schools grant is available for up to $4,000 and no matching funds are required which means that as long as the project costs within that maximum amount that you can request, your school will not have to come up with any additional funding toward the project. Some things to be aware of as far as eligibility, and the following are all not eligible for these grants. We can't accept requests from parochial schools since we are using state funds. Your project can't pay any school personnel except if you need to hire some substitute teachers while your regular teachers are participating in the project. This grant can't cover any substitutions for regular school programs, so if your school has 
lost its regular arts program, this grant can't be used to cover similar curriculum. Also not eligible are supplies and equipment that are outside of what is needed for the project. So unfortunately, these grants cannot cover things like a new sound system for your auditorium. Also ineligible are projects that don't have an art focus, activities that take place outside of Minnesota, again, because we are using state funds, that is a requirement of those funds. Also ineligible are activities for the religious socialization of the participants or audience and fundraising events. In other words, this funding should be helping you break even on your project not to make a profit. So if you are doing some sort of theater production, if you decide to have a small ticket fee for that, that money has to go toward the project. It can't be extra profit for your school. And also your project can't involve any fundraising with a booster club, for instance. Also ineligible are payments of debts that are incurred before the grant begins. Using these grant funds as a match for another grant from us, or if you have a past due final report still outstanding. This program has a monthly deadline, the first of the month, August 2024 through May 2025. And the earliest date that you could start your project would be the first day of the following month. So if you applied in order to get an application in by August 1st, you could start your project beginning September 1st. And for all of these, you'll need to submit your application by 4 p.m. on the deadline date. The system will not allow you to submit after that time. And note that this is a change from previous years when the deadline was 4.30 p.m. You'll need to choose a start date for your project. And in doing that, you'll first want to check for the earliest allowed start date for the round you're applying for. You can't start any project activities before that start date, and this would include things like ordering any supplies, holding auditions, doing any advertising, and you can't expend any funds before that start date. If there is something that you would need to pay for before that date, for instance, if you had to put down a deposit on something early, then you could not include that cost in your project budget. You'll also need to choose a project end date. You'll want to give yourself plenty of time to complete the project activities and then also evaluate the project. Also be aware that projects awarded in fiscal year 25 need to be finished up by June 30th of 2026. So that is the latest end date that you could choose. You'll need to have two people connected with your application. You'll need a project director, and this would be whoever is most directly responsible for the day-to-day -day activities of the project. And then you'll need your authorizing official, and this would be your principal, superintendent, or someone else who has authorizing power for your school. These cannot be the same person. They need to be two different people and both will need to sign all of your grant related documents, including the application. And now we'll head over to our website and look at what resources are available for you there. Here we are on our website and everything that you need will be under this grants tab including a uh, login to the grant system. And then we have information about each of our grant programs. So we'll go over to our grants for schools and youth. And here are our arts in the schools grants, but first we are going to talk a little bit about the Compass roster of artists. And this is a Minnesota based roster of artists who are available to come into your schools. So we'll go over to their website and you can go to their find an artist. If you want, you can filter by the kind of art form that you're looking for or age group. And then you'll see they have many artists available. We'll take a look at one here. And so they've got some information about the artist and what kind of 
programming she is able to do. You also can use their book now button to get connected and get that all set up. So now we'll go over to our actual Arts of the Schools page. And first you will see the guidelines for this program. And make sure to read through these. We did talk about some eligibility things to be aware of, but we want to make sure that you haven't missed anything. So please take a moment to read through the guidelines. We have another Apply Now button here that takes you to the grant system. Then we've got all of the important dates that you need to know for this program, when the deadlines are, when to expect things to happen as far as the decision process and your earliest project start date for that round. Here we have a tutorial video for you. This is actually last year's at the moment, but our current video, which we are recording as we speak, will be here shortly. We also have information about live grant workshops that are available throughout the coming year. Down at the bottom of the page, we've got some materials that may be helpful for you. We have the guidelines again. We have the application questions in a Word document in case you'd like to work in that first and paste into the system later. Here are our scoring criteria and scoring rubric if you'd like to learn more about that. And we even have the final report questions so you can get an idea of what you are getting into with your report. And now we will head over to our workshops and assistance page. Our workshops and assistance page outlines all of the ways that you can get help with your application. We have grant support open office hours on the second Tuesday of each month. You can stop by our office in Marshall from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. While you're there, you can talk through project ideas, sit and work on your application with staff there to answer any questions. Maybe you need some help preparing your work samples or working on a final report, but you can just stop in and get the help that you need. We also have some grants Q&A sessions. There are a series of those in person, so look to see if we are coming somewhere near you. And these will be updated as we have specific dates scheduled. We also have virtual sessions available. You can register for those here. And for both of these, you can learn a little bit about all of the grant programs that are available and then have time to ask questions about your specific project and get those answered. This year, we also have a couple of workshops on some specific grant writing topics. First on reaching underserved and underrepresented communities, and then on grant goals and evaluation. So you can check those out. You can easily schedule some time to meet with me. You can just click this link and choose a time on my calendar and we can meet by phone, by Zoom, or in person at our office in Marshall. And then here are videos of our past workshops that we've had as we are recording our videos for our fiscal year 25 grants. Those will also appear here. There's one more page with resources for you, and that is our credits and resources page. So we've got links to grant credit lines and logos that you may need to be using for your marketing. Then we've got a sample contract so you can see what that looks like ahead of time. If your organization is using a fiscal sponsor, there's a sample agreement available here. If you're doing a project where you need a cooperative agreement with your facility owner, there's a sample agreement here for that. And then we've also got some accessibility resources here for you. And now we'll head over to our grant system. That brings us to our login page. 
You can enter your email address and password here if you already have an account in the system. If you are totally new, you can click create new account. If you're not sure whether you or someone from your organization already has an account in the system, you can contact us and we can get that figured out for you. But for right now, we are going to log in. And as we first come into the system, a reminder if you have also worked as a grant reviewer or panelist for us to remember to switch your role to applicant. And here we are on our applicant dashboard. So this is where you will come when you log in to the grant system, unless you are coming in for the first time, then you will be brought straight to this apply page. Here on the apply page, we have all of the grants that are currently available and we'll scroll through and find our arts in the schools grant here. If you want to take a look at the application without actually starting anything, you can use this preview button, but we are going to go ahead and hit apply. I'll point out a few buttons at the top of the application here. We have Google Translate embedded into the site, so if you need to work in another language, you can select that here, and then it will translate the interface and all the questions into that language, and you can go ahead and work with that. We have the Copy Previous Answers button. If you have done an application in the system before, it will bring up a list of those applications, and you can choose one to copy answers from and it will copy over answers to any questions that are the same between the two applications. We also have a collaborate button, and this allows you to invite someone to work on the application with you. You would put in their email address here, choose what level of permission you'd like to give them, and then enter a message asking them whatever it is you'd like them to do if you want them to Enter the budget information. If the artist wants to come in and put some information about themselves directly into the application, or if you just want somebody to proof things for you. So you would fill this out, click the invite button. The person you're inviting will get an email and they'll just need to create a password to get into the system and work on the application with you. Starting out, you'll need a name for your project, and there are some examples here. You'll also fill in the amount you are requesting, though you'll want to wait to fill out your budget form first before you fill this in. We've got links again to some of those important documents and a few tips as you're working on your application. We like to point out that the character limit for most of the fields is very large, and we're not expecting you to fill that up. So if you feel like you have answered everything in the question and still have a lot of characters left, that's okay. No need to try and fill up those text boxes. So you'll start out describing the project you're hoping to do. And it says in addition to explaining the activities that are going to take place, it asks for some additional information, which students are participating, whether they're in a particular school building, grade level, class subject, when are things happening, the more you can provide as far as dates, a daily schedule, which group of students is participating in each activity, that's all very helpful. If there will be some participation fees charged, how will the activity be made accessible to all of the students? And then finally talk about what kind of community sharing you're going to be doing with your project. Here's where you can enter your start and end dates and it does remind you the earliest and latest that those can be. Next, you'll fill out your budget form. You can create your own budget to attach, but we also have an Excel form here that you can use. And this Excel form can be helpful as it does some calculations for you. So you'll enter in either the name of your project or your school, and then you can start describing the different costs that you're going to have. 
and we'll enter in some amounts here. And you'll see that this is adding up for you. And if you have some other funding for the project, whether that might be another donation you have or some participation fees, you can put that here. And then you'll see that this calculates for you. Your request cannot exceed 2950, which is the cash cost minus the other funding or the maximum request amount for this grant program, whichever is less. So our arts in the schools, we can request up to 4,000. 2950 is less. So that is what we can stick in our request amount and our profit equals zero, which is what we're aiming for. But let's say the project is more expensive. And now it tells us our request cannot exceed 4950 or the max for the grant program, whichever is less. So in this case, our 4000 is less. So that's how much we can request. But now it tells us our profit is a minus 950. So we're going to have to come up with that funding somewhere. Maybe we find some more donations or the school is willing to contribute a little bit. So now that we've found that, we'll see our profit is back to zero. So you would fill this out and save it and then you can attach it here to your application. We also have a budget narrative field if there are some details that don't really fit well into your spreadsheet and you want to provide some more information about that. Next, you're asked about the artists or organizations that will be involved in your project. It asks you to describe them in more detail and why did you choose them. Depending on the type of project that you're doing, you would attach artists' resumes and a sample lesson plan if you're doing a residency of some sort. And then we will need some work samples. And again, depending on project type, it might be the artist that's coming or some information about the various arts organizations and institutions that you will be visiting. So you may be attaching written materials, images, audio, video, and we've got some links here if you're needing to resize some things or combine some files to help you do that. Because not everyone who will be reviewing your application may have access to social media, we ask that you not provide social media links as your only work samples. So if you do need to provide a social media link, first to make sure your profile is public, but also be aware that not everyone may be able to see that. But we do ask if you do provide something from social media, you include a screenshot in the upload field so that those who can't access that can see a little bit of what that was about. So we've got several upload fields here for work samples, along with some places for links. And with these, you would, in the box above, describe what it is you're attaching and then upload that file. And then for links, here's also a place to describe what you are linking to. Then we ask about the impact of this project. How will this project be supplementing your arts programs rather than substituting for them? What kind of added benefit will this have for your students? And then more specifically, what impact or changes will take place for your students? This might be changes to their artistic skills, knowledge, attitudes, or behaviors. And finally, how might you plan to measure or prove that these changes have taken place? Some way to gather feedback, and then what kinds of feedback will indicate that this project was successful? And if you are using an evaluation tool of some kind, you can upload that here. We also ask about how many children will be benefiting, the number of hours 
of student artist contact time. So you would take one student and figure out how many hours would that one student be interacting with the artist or if you're on a field trip with the production or arts venue that you are going to. How many adult artists are going to be involved and then if there is any adult audience. This next section is just some data that we need to collect and doesn't have any bearing on your application. We need your school board members, some demographics, and some information about your total audience and arts expenses in your most recently completed fiscal year. And they are asking about expenses for arts activities that are not part of regular curriculum. We also ask what opportunities for assistance you might have taken advantage of in working on your application. And then just some contact information. Here's where you'll enter your project director and your authorizing official. We also ask who the grant writer is in case we have some questions. And then we finish up with signatures. This year we are also participating with our fellow regional arts councils in gathering some feedback about our application process. So if you have a moment to quickly complete some of these survey questions, we would really appreciate that. It has, again, no bearing on your application and the reviewers will not see your answers. Down at the bottom, you'll see there's a submit application button and we also have a save application button. So that system will be auto saving for you as you are working, but if you click the save application button, it will give you a list of the required fields that you still need to complete. So it'll help you track your progress. If you want to keep working, you can hit continue, but we're gonna head back to our dashboard. So here now is the new application that we just started. And if you want to come back and keep working, you would just click this edit application link to go back in. And this would be the same place that you would come back to if you are awarded a grant to find your contract and your final report. And now we'll head back over to our slides. Now we have some tips for you as you're working on your application. First, make sure to think ahead to choose the best timing for your application. So check out the deadlines and start dates and see what makes the most sense for the timing of your project. Then read the guidelines and criteria carefully. As we mentioned before, we went through most things, but there are probably a few things that are in that written guidelines that we may not have covered. So make sure to take a look at that so that you're not surprised by anything. It's also good to start working on your application early. If you are needing to gather information from other people, if you might have some questions you need time to get answered, just make sure to give yourself plenty of time. Also in the application, you have noticed that a lot of the questions had multiple parts to them. So make sure you are addressing all of those and really answering those fully that you're not missing any of those pieces. Also, as you're writing, you'll want to keep your answers real clear and concise. As we mentioned before, no need to try and fill up the text boxes if you feel like you fully answered the question. And also no need for any fancy grant language you might think you need. Just using everyday language is fine, as if you're telling a friend about the project. Another suggestion is to not assume that grant reviewers know anything about you or your project. We have reviewers coming from all around the region, so they may not have heard of your organization or be familiar with you as an artist. So be careful about including acronyms without spelling those out, talking about certain programs without explaining just assume as you're writing that the person reading doesn't know anything about what you're doing. 
And finally, we are here to help, so don't hesitate to contact us with any questions. There are multiple ways to get assistance with your application. You can certainly contact us to talk through your project before you're getting started. Make sure you're under the right grant program. Make sure elements of your project are eligible. You can also get answers to questions about the application as you're working on your project. And finally, we can do a review of your application draft before you submit it. If you let us know up to about two weeks before the deadline, we can guarantee that we're able to look through your application, give you some feedback, let you know if you're missing anything, if anything might sound confusing to the reviewers. This does not guarantee funding of your project, but we are able to give you some feedback. So another great reason to start working on your application early in order to have time for that part of the process. So what happens after you submit your application? The first thing is that SMOC staff will review it for eligibility and completeness. And if at that stage we find that something is missing or there's an eligibility concern, you'll have 48 hours to fix whatever that is. And then at that point, the group of applications from the round will go on to a panel of individuals from around our region who will discuss and score the applications based on the criteria for the program, which we'll look at in a minute. And then finally, their recommendations go to our board of directors who make the final funding decisions. And that most often just involves taking the applications in ranked order of score and taking the funding down the list as far as the budget goes. Here are the scoring criteria that the reviewers will be using to score your application. They will be looking at the artistic quality and merit of the project, which is worth 53% of your score. They'll look at the impact on the participants and audience, worth 32% of your score, and the feasibility of the project, worth 15% of your score. And to go into a little more detail for artistic quality and merit, they'll be looking to see if the activities have high artistic merit and potential for the students to develop knowledge, skills, or understanding of the arts. And they'll also look to see if the artists or arts institutions involved show a high level of artistic quality and professionalism. For impact, the reviewers will be looking for a depth of engaged student learning and an age appropriate scope with what's happening. They'll look to see that the project is enhancing your regular school art programs, not substituting for anything. The activities should be open and accessible to students who wish to participate. They'll check to see if you do have some sort of community sharing component. And finally, they'll look to see if you've identified proposed changes to take place as a result of the project and have plans to measure whether those changes have taken place. For feasibility, the reviewers will be looking to see that you have an appropriate timeline and budget, and if you have received previous grants from us, if those have been successfully completed. After the panelists have done their scoring, you have the opportunity to be awarded a couple more percentage points to your score. You can get one additional percentage point for each of these following criteria that you may meet. If you are a first time applicant to us, if your organization is led by or primarily serving black, indigenous, or people of color, or LGBTQ communities, or people with disabilities, or if you are from a county that hasn't received as much funding from us recently. If your grant is awarded, you'll need to complete a contract, and we saw where those would be located in the grant system a little bit ago. And then the payment of your full grant award will be sent to you after the contract is received, and you'll have an option to receive that electronically or by check. You'll need to acknowledge your grant on any publicity or marketing materials that you have. You'll need to include the credit line that can be found in your grant contract. And you might also need to include this Minnesota Legacy logo depending on the source of your funds. 
but all of these credit materials and logo files, etc., will be sent to you so you won't have to worry about which options you need to include. And we also looked at the credits and materials page on our website where some of that information is available also. We understand that things happen as you're working on your project. So if it's looking like you may need to make some changes to your original plan while your project is in progress, contact us and we may be able to help with things like extending your project end date, approving some changes to your budget. So no worries if things change, but just make sure to contact us and get those changes approved. You'll be receiving a reminder partway through your project, checking in to see if anything has changed and what kind of changes might require a project change request to SMOC. You'll have a final report due 60 days after the project end date that you have chosen. So once you start your project, it's a good idea to go into that report and check what information you'll need to be gathering. There are some audience demographics questions, for instance. So make sure to look ahead what kind of information you'll need to be gathering during your project. I'd also like to make you aware of another grant that we have that may be of interest to students that you work with. This is our Art Study Opportunity for Youth grant, and this is for students who are in grades 5 through 12 to do some sort of special arts opportunity, whether that's attending a camp, taking a class, a one-on-one -on -one study with a local artist. And then for low-income students, they also have the opportunity to request funding for regular lessons like piano lessons. This program now has a monthly deadline, same as the Arts in the Schools grants, so first of the month, August 2024 through May 2025. And you can find more information about this on our website. And that is all of the information that I need to share with you today. Thanks for joining us for this grant training. Don't forget to take advantage of the options for assistance as you work on your application. Feel free to contact us with any questions you may have. Good luck!